Hi, and welcome to the Healthcare CEO Show, where you'll find actionable insights on healthcare leadership from the best and brightest in the industry. I'm your host, Daniel Fernandez. Let's get a pulse. With me today, I have Chris Chana. Chris is the founder and CEO of Chelsea Place, providing senior care with a range of solutions, assisted living, home care, and daytime care. Welcome to the show, Chris. Hey, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it, Daniel. You the, you the now, man. Thanks. Now, if anybody's <laughs> only listening to this, what they won't uh, be able to notice is that you're a relatively young CEO and founder, uh, comparatively speaking. Right. Yeah. Uh, th- th- 32, man. Going on 33. But uh, yeah, we've been, been in this field for since I was like 23. So. Yeah. And that's, I think, probably one of the biggest things, right? You're relatively young now, but you started this thing like 10 years ago. Um, <laughs> yeah. And while most people would say, hey, he probably got into it. I mean, like most people, when they think about going into healthcare, they think, okay, well, it could be lucrative, right? Right. You weren't exactly handed a pot of gold to start this thing. You had to hustle. And I feel as if that hustle eliminates all the people that are solely driven by money. There's got to be a passion for what you do uh, to get it to the point where you're at today, where it's a thriving, booming uh, senior care, you know, solution provider. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And I I think... So there's a lot of times people make the assumption like, hey, is your family in the business, right? And, and they'll say that down of like me then continuing into it. So the thing is, you know, just totally different than anything my, my family's ever done before. So, um, but yeah, it's super passionate about it. And I think realizing the need going forward and also understanding that there's not enough young people that are getting involved in this industry. It, it, that itself, I think, is a catalyst for me to like really be passionate and even get more involved in and get all younger because I think that is going to be so important as we you know go through the next 20, 30, 40 years. Yeah. You know? And speaking of young, I mean, you, you were relatively young when you started this thing. I mean, what was it like getting started in a space where you're essentially a younger guy taking care of seniors? I mean, what was that like? Yeah, it was- <laughs> It was, it was, yeah, people just didn't, they just didn't understand why, right? Like, so we started in, with our little assisted living facility. Um, you know, we didn't ha- come from anything. We didn't have a lot of backing. So we literally moved into it, lived there for three and a half years. Um, you know, did everything from, you know, caregiving to cleaning to cooking. I mean, every job you could possibly imagine. You know, I'd put a suit on in the morning, like help some residents get up for the day, help them with a shower, make them a meal and then go out marketing. Like it was just, it was a completely surreal experience. Like looking back, it's like probably the, the thing that like, is always my remi- remi- like reminder of just, you know, a, like a humble beginning and never losing touch with what that was like. Um, especially knowing what it takes for our team to actually take care of people and, and, and care for our residents and, and all of the seniors that we care for on a daily basis, you know? I mean, do you think being involved in the day-to-day operations on the front lines like you were early on kind of gave you a new appreciation for the team around you today? Oh. A hundred percent. Like just like, because I did everything that like when they have a story, I'm like, I can totally understand like the, the level of empathy that I can like have towards what they're going through is something that is so I feel like valuable because if you didn't know what it was like to do their, their, their roles, like it would be, you know, as, as like sitting in kind of the ivory tower in a sense and trying to make decisions, um, you know, on their level, you have to get involved and see what that's like. I mean, I feel like it, it's hard to be like, I would think it's like, it's gotta be really hard to be an investor, you know, or be like a large, you know, uh, organization where like a management team, where if you haven't put yourselves in those shoes yet, like it's hard, how, how can you manage or invest in, in, in a company like, like in senior care and healthcare, like companies, if you don't really know what it's like on the ground floor, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, and speaking of investors, this is an interesting thing I read the other day. Um, Reddit co-founder Alexis Ohanian who's now heading up a VC firm, he predicts there's going to be a major change in senior living over the next decade. Um, And he thinks that new change will be led by disruptors. And I would certainly consider yourself a disruptor um, in the space. Trying, man, trying. We're just just (laughs) fighting that battle every day, you know, like, because everyone's like so used to like the status quo and we're trying to switch it up a little bit, so. Yeah, and I mean, you are very much challenging the status quo. Um, Tell us a little bit about the daytime care that you guys are providing, because I think that's one of those unique features that you have going for you. Sure, you know, we we um, you know, we, I, after we had started our assisted living facility, we were trying to figure out what's that next step. How do we continue yeah. to grow? We looked at opening other assisted living facilities, maybe purchase and some, but 
came across literally like in, in a three, in, in a one week period, three people walked into our door, asked for respite care, like daytime care at our uh, assisted living community. And like the same week, and I just thought it was weird. I had never looked into it like all that much as like, let me go pursue that. But when those three people did that, that one time, I was like, man, this is interesting. Like, let me go explore what that industry is like. And when I set out to go find out like, what are some of these other like, you know, daycare centers like, you know, what, what exists out there? What options do families have? I mean, I was just appalled by like, our like the, the options that existed I, I couldn't believe like that's what this is about i'm like there's got to be a better way like there's got to be you know you know you know just a, a better experience for these families than what it currently existed and, and i think what i learned through all that was that you know m the majority of adult daycare centers are medicaid funded and 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 because of that they're limited you know when it comes to you know financial freedom to be able to like create an experience for people and so then ultimately what ends up happening is you attract a greater number of Medicaid, um, you know, uh, participants as opposed to private pay, and you never service really the needs of like the private pay clientele the way that they might want to, to be serviced, and um, and so I think when we were looking at this, we're like, you know, we we saw this opportunity where, you know, the cost of care is so great, you know, bringing someone into your home, one-on-one -on -one care using Home Instead, Right at Home, things like that is is you know over the years is gonna be exponentially so expensive. Like, how can you bring cost of care down, but increase the value that you, you know, are giving to seniors um, and create like a, an option for families going forward. I mean, I, I could, there's so many like, like areas I could go with this thing, but long story short, we open up a senior daycare center uh, that is licensed for 60 people. Um, it's a standalone building. Our entire focus at that center is to create just, you know, uh, an incredible um, social experience uh, for our members that come every day. Um, and, and really give them a reason and a purpose and a, and, you know, and a meaningful life, a reason to live, you know? I think for me personally, when I was learning a little bit about your brand, um, the one thing that stood out to me was, like you talked about, the experience that you guys are creating. Um, typically, when I think of the senior living experience or any sort of daycare type environment, I think of like wood paneling and dated carpet and things like right. that, right? But your facility yeah, yeah, yeah. is like that, right? I mean, you're essentially yeah. creating an environment where they can thrive, not just survive. And I feel like maybe that's been the approach, you know, in the earlier days of just like providing a service that allows people to maybe survive, but there's, they're not exactly set to thrive. 100%. And, like, like, yeah, I mean, like, I feel like the, some, like the mindset of the past has been like, just a place for people to be safe, you know, where like ours is trying to create that environment where these family members, when they go to pick up their loved one, like mom and dad are like, we're not ready to go. Like we're, we want to stay. You know, like if I could, if, that, if that's the kind of experience we're creating for people, like then I know we're doing the right thing. I know they're having fun. And, and, if you, and I think when I started to put myself in the shoes of, 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 of someone that attends our center. So if you just for a moment, put yourself like, you know, being 85 years old, um, all your friends are gone. They've either passed away or they just are no longer near you. You don't have the ability to just like go ride downtown to go visit a you know, friend for lunch. Um, you have to rely on, on others and you wake up and there's no one in your home. You're by yourself. Like, you have nothing to do. Who are you going to call? You know, who, like, you know, family's all out of state. Like you, know, you turn on TV, like, what is your purpose anymore? Right. You know, we like what we love to do, but can you imagine being 85 and you, you can't do that anymore? And it's like, well, what's the point to life anymore? Like, so like when I put myself in that scenario, like, can you imagine like waking that up and like, look, look, I have nothing like maybe you're looking forward to like Christmas and these little family like moments throughout the year, but nothing on a daily basis. So like to give someone an experience at, in our center where like in the morning, like they cannot wait to get up. They cannot wait to go to the center for the day and see their friends and have fun and be connected with people. Like there's no greater gift, man. It's, it's, it's literally one of the coolest experiences, you know? No, in, in the same manner that you put yourself in, you know, your seniors place, I put myself in our listeners place yeah. and they're going to want to know like what, what is daycare? Cause I think of like senior living and, and right. there's maybe not a lot of information out there about that, or most people aren't familiar with it. So kind of like explain to me what this, you know, adult daycare is. Sure. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's like, it is like the perfect solution for families when it comes to like finding care during the daytime for someone. And, 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 and I hate to compare it to a child daycare center, but sure. you know, um, because what we do there is not, like, you know, we're not, it's nothing like that. We're not treating people like that. It's, it's not that at all. But at the end of the day, you have families that are caring for mom and dad, 
you have families that are caring for their spouse and because of maybe safety or just concerns of leaving them alone at home, you know, they, they're worried, you know, about them being at home alone while they're either going, you know, to do some errands or whether they work full time, whatever the case may be. And they just need a place for their loved ones to be in a safe environment. And they have two options. You can choose home care or if someone comes into your home and they can sit with that person and, and visit with that person, or you could potentially choose a daycare center if that exists in your area and, and, you know, they could come for the daytime. So the way we operate is, you know, we're like open Monday through Friday, eight to five, you know, we're open Saturdays, nine to four. Um, you know, we provide transportation to and from people's homes um, or their loved ones could drop them off for the day. They can stay for a couple hours. They can stay all day. Um, there's no you know minimums as far as the amount of time they need to stay or, or whatnot, but we just provide that like break for families, you know, uh, to, to get the care they need for their loved ones so they can go do you know, the things that they need to do, you know? Yeah. Now, because of this global pandemic, we've all kind of experienced a little bit of what it's like to be isolated. And sure. do you think that it's given us more empathy towards our seniors? Because a lot of them tend to become more isolated as they age. Um, we all have this like need to interact with each other and right. you know, they do as well, but. Um, well, yeah. I think it's, I think it's compounded it, right? Like, yeah. like uh, the isolation thing, like to me, I think it's compounded any other issues going on. So, um, you know, you put isolation on top of COVID on top of, you know, flu season on top of all these other comorbidities that people have, you know, all that stuff is just a compounding effect. And I think at the end of the day, like, ha like, you know, having a will to live, makes all the difference in the world when it comes to, you know, like beating that flu season or beating like the bronchitis or, you know, like if you don't have a will to live anymore, then all of those things can, are going to take you out. And, and that isolation factor is what like eliminates the will. I think about like our, um, you know, when, when I think about like my grandpa, for instance, yeah. he, he um, actually passed away in, I think uh, April or no, it was May. And, and the whole reason was, was because of like, they shut down their entire community. He lived in a CCRC community. They shut everything down and he had no one um, to talk to or communicate with on a daily basis. Like he did, he couldn't go to, you know, visit them at lunchtime or dinner time. And literally he became isolated, got depressed and then, and then ended up passing away. Like just, just because he stopped eating and he stopped like, like he just didn't have a will to live anymore. And it was just like crazy to see someone that was perfectly healthy, like all of a sudden give up on life, you know? Yeah. Yeah, no, that's, um, that's been an unfortunate byproduct of this crazy, yeah. crazy year. Yeah, I know. Um, it's tough, man. It's, 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 you know, but that's, that's where I think there's such, there's such an important focus that needs to be had on the isolation piece. And how, how do we do it safely? How do we do it in a way, um, you know, that, you know, we can kind of mitigate this whole COVID issue, but at the same time, give people a reason to, you know, look for something, something to look forward to today, being around with others, being connected, things like that. Yeah. And, you know, and, and speaking of, you know, when they're there and they're connecting with others, what are, what are some of like the, the funner activities that you guys have going on over there? And it's, uh, so <laughs> like we got everything you could possibly imagine. I mean, like literally, um, I mean, it's, to me, it kind of reminds me of a uh, cruise ship where like, right. like, 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 like every hour or every 30 minutes to, to every hour, we have a new thing going on. Um, a lot of times we'll have multiple uh, activities going on, like seven different tables with groups of six to seven people. Um, you know, we have live music every single day. We have catered meals at, uh, at lunchtime. Uh, you know, we do a continental breakfast in the morning. Um, you know, you know we'll, we'll have dancing and singing. And, you know, I mean, uh, like, it, like, you know, we'll have theme parties every week. Um, you know, so like a lot of times, like families would get into it too and look at their loved ones all like dressed up in whatever theme it is that week. And, and it's, and it's cool. Cause then they're like taking pictures and posting on, you know, the social media sharing with family, like, you know, look, look, look at my husband today, or, you know, he'll dress up as a pirate or, you know, uh, they'll, they'll have like a 19, uh, you know, 60s theme or, or whatever, like, you know, party. And it's just a lot of fun. It's so cool. Like, cause every day, what's cool about the center, unlike mm -hmm. our home care agency and assisted living. Is right. it our entire focus at the center is having fun, you know, yeah. where like in those other two environments, there's a lot of other logistical like care concerns. Of course, we provide care in right. our center, but our entire mission, our entire focus is to have fun. You just alluded to the fact that people will have fun and then upload some stuff to like YouTube or social media or Facebook or whatnot. This is an yeah. interesting statistic I learned the other day. There are 10,000 baby boomers retiring every single day in the U.S. Huge. Um, and they're more engaged with digital platforms like Facebook. I mean, my mom will jump on there. She's in her 70s and comment and things of that nature. Um, they're utilizing smartphones more than ever. 
Um, so they're definitely more engaged with more of the digital platforms. And, I, have, and, I have two residents yeah. that are my, that friended me on Facebook that live in our <laughs> facility. And like, I was like, this is, a, this is the weirdest thing I actually have. Like, and now they like comment and like everything. I'm like, I gotta be careful what I post now, you know? <laughs> yeah. But I think one of the most interesting things, of course, is what you're doing with leveraging your own social channels to engage with seniors. And I think that uh, I ran across your YouTube channel and doing some, you know, background and recon on Chelsea Place. And <laughs> your YouTube channel is just amazing. Um, <laughs> how I did appreciate you it, man. Thank started you. with this idea? Like, where did this idea come from? I mean... <laughs> You know, so like, you know, um, you know, it's, and you know, it's, it's like, like, you know, what you guys are doing too, right? Like, I love what you're doing, but like, like, I, I, I like that kind of inspiration that I saw on YouTube yeah. for all these different industries, you know, like for you, know, you, you, like what blew my mind is like, there'd be like a landscaping company and this guy's got 250,000 followers or subscribers, <laughs> you know, like, and you're like, what? Like they just mows lawns, but like people are watching and digesting this, this, this content, but there was nothing like absolutely right. nothing in senior care. And, and I think what I noticed is like when I would like watch these landscaping videos or like yeah. I was searching for industries that just to me would like be like, like, like how can this like construction, like septic tanks. Yeah. There's like one guy I follow, he's got like a hundred thousand followers and they even <laughs> saw septic tanks, you know, <laughs> like, like <laughs> it's like, but, the, but what I noticed is in the comment section, right. you would have like these young aspiring entrepreneurs, like, right. like, at, like, like getting, using that content like right. like which was exciting them about the industry and then they're asking questions and they're trying to learn and they're like seeing like the behind the scenes of this operation and i just felt like man like what a way for us to like over time build an audience of young entrepreneurs showing them the logistic like what the logistics of what's happening behind the scenes you know what our ideas are what we're doing and 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 you know and helping to create and curate this audience that would attract people in a fun and exciting way to an industry that just doesn't seem fun and exciting, you know? Yeah. And I think that's one of the most fascinating things. I mean, I, we talked earlier on about how you, you're being disruptive. Whoever thought, you know, a company that had senior care would have as many followers as you do on social media, which I think is fascinating. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> there are people following a social or senior right. care brand right. online. And I think that's yeah. impressive. <laughs> I mean, I think, the, it, I think it'll be a slower ramp up time, but like, what about, but like I, I told someone the other day, like, yeah, uh, because we, we, we get these like, we'll get like a, a, someone will message us or someone will leave a comment. And it's those little nuggets that like, right. I, like I was, I was you know, explaining to my, you know, our, our head of video production, yeah. like it's those little nuggets that it keeps us going. Like we get the, that's why, because there's, there's so many more people out there like that, that yeah. want to see this content. And, uh, and so it's just consistency over time, you know, we'll get there. Uh, but I would love to like, you know, you know, inspire more people to get involved in this field. And if, and if we can show them behind the scenes and show them what it's all about and show them what we're doing and get them excited, um, and there'd be nothing more rewarding than seeing more people get involved because of that. Now you have some interesting content on our YouTube channel. What are some of like, <laughs> your, maybe your favorite stories that you've published to YouTube? So like, you know, you know, I, I think at the end of the day, if I, if I could, if I could make every single week, just something fun we do with our residents, like that would be my favorite. Right. Yeah, so we have a variety of things. You know, but my favorite for sure are like, um, you know, like we took Lee, who's, uh, she was like 78. We took her um, on, a, on a parasailing adventure. You know, like it, it was like something that she'd never done before. Um, and so, you know, like we documented the whole journey, you know, of, of just, you know, it, it, you know, surprising her about it and then, you know, taking her out, taking her parasailing. And it was, she had the time of her life. I mean, she literally told her daughter that it was her favorite day of her entire life. And it's like, wow. like when you like, 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 like when you like can do that for someone at that age and like, like, yeah. you know, and I mean, you she's got a smile for days, right? Like it's, it's just amazing. Right. Like, uh, and then, and then, um, you know, we took uh, one of our residents at our living so we went on a motorcycle ride. Um, you know, we took him out and like a, we rented a, a Mustang like, cause COVID, right. We didn't want to go places yeah. and we we're trying to find a way to like, you know, make sure we were staying compliant with uh, the whole, uh, you know, lockdown thing. So we rented a Mustang and took everyone out like one at a time in a convertible Mustang on like a beautiful sunny Florida day. Um, just, you know, just, just anything we can do like that. You know, we got some crazy yeah. things planned. We're, we got helicopter rides coming up. We got, um, we got some other adventures that we're going to be doing. And, and uh, I think we got a helicopter ride. We got some uh, a fishing. We're going to do a, uh, a deep sea fishing thing. We got um, uh, airplane ride. I don't know. We just, you know, right. it's whatever we can do. Like, what, you know, we always did an airboat ride the other day. That right. was cool. You know, so I think one of the, uh, so because you're going to have, you know, we have healthcare executives and CEOs and physicians listening, right? I think one right. of the beautiful things is that 
yes, like the seniors are having a great time and you're engaging with all of them, but this seems like also that it would be a very good thing for uh, uh, your internal culture too. I mean, I would think that your yes. team, you know, <laughs> have you well, seen so, that? Some, 100%, like some of yeah. the, you know, like, 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 like we um, actually threw a, a launch party, invited all of our team yeah. to, to join us. And, and right. just be a part of this, you know? And so, and we want our team to be involved in it too. But, you know, of course you get some people that are camera shy, but at the end of the day, what's cool about it is that they're, they're, they're seeing like behind the scenes, like how we feel about the industry, right? Like they're, they're getting the real authentic, um, you know, like, like, you know, I guess the, the stuff that we want to be able to do for people. And, and, and so I think it really does help create, you know, uh, the, the right kind of culture. It really helps make, maybe that work more exciting, more meaningful to them because they know we're making a difference in people's lives and they can actually see it and watch it and be a part of the experience. I think that's one of the things that's been probably echoed by more of our guests than anything else. Um, leaders, you know, conveying more of their authentic self and they're doing it in different ways, but you're, you're literally doing it and you're like a next level of authenticity in <laughs> literally trying. recording everything. Um, I'm trying. I know like the, yeah. like the one today is like we had a massive like plumbing <laughs> issue at our assisted living and like the one mm -hmm. that's gonna go out later today is all the you know yeah. joys of owning your own business and yeah. <laughs> having issues like that so you know it, it's it, that that's what I'm trying to say I wish it was all fun stuff right. but it's like we're just trying to show that everything going on like we want you know you know like at the end of the day when you're when you're an entrepreneur I feel like you're always facing these crazy challenges um and part of the entrepreneurial spirit is like being able to, you know, uh, like, like, like figure out how to solve all these different problems that come your way. Um, right. You know, and whether they're organizational, whether it's operations, whether it's marketing, whether it's billing, whether it's, you know, finance, there's just such a variety of things that you have to like learn how to figure out and solve. And cause it's just, it's like, you know, owning a business and, and creating something is very complex and, you know, there's no like sign, there's no like, like a, this is black and white. This is how you do it. You know, it's, it's a very complex organism, you know, so. And it's never linear. I mean, it's always no, going to be, no. you know, a roller coaster. <laughs> I know. Trust me. I, I, yeah, it's, it is very, that's a very true statement, you know, but that's, that's, yeah. it's like learning to appreciate those highs and lows in, in the journey, you know, and, and that's a struggle for me. Don't get me wrong, but like, you know, I, I just got to remind myself that more often. So. Yeah. A few closing thoughts. Yeah. It is said that leaders are readers. Yep. Do you have a favorite book? Yeah. So, I have come to really love uh, Patrick Bed David. Okay. Um, I don't I don't know if you're familiar with with him at all. Yeah. Um, you know, but 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 Patrick but, but he's he's someone I came across maybe about two years ago. He's got yeah. a lot of educational content on YouTube. Um, but he came and, and and he's very like he's very methodical and like I love like the way he, he he'll share his like trade secrets about his industry. But it's uh it's called Your Next Five Moves, um, and it's by Patrick Bed David. But I love that book. Um, you know, he, he's taught me more about business than probably anyone, um, as far as like a mentor is concerned. And, um, you know, yeah, so, so yeah, your next five moves by, uh, Patrick, David, great, great guy. And just a lot of great information. So I love that. Your favorite quote. I mean, I, I, I uh, you know, I love Napoleon Hill. I'm sure like, I'm sure this probably is a popular quote, but, um, I think, you know, at the end of the day, I've learned over time that it's like, whatever you set your mind to. Um, you know, whatever the mind can uh, conceive and believe it can achieve, um, you know, by Napoleon Hill. And I just, I love like the, the, the principle behind that, you know, just like, you know, you set your mind to something, you know, you have a dream, you have a vision, you have an idea, you know, setting your mind to that thing, believing in yourself, having the confidence that like, you know, like I believe in this idea so much that I'm, I'm going to look past the failures and all the reasons why it may not work and all that stuff, because I truly believe this needs to come to pass. And then, uh, and then just going after it and just pursuing it until you see it through, you know? Yeah. 2020 was a trying year for everyone on this planet. There's no question. Yeah. What has it taught you? You know, I, I think, uh, if anything, um, <laughs> Uh, you know, for like a second to like slow down, you know, like, um, um, I, I think if there's anything that, you know, the, for me, I just want to get to the end goal, like that I see in my head as fast as possible. Um, I think so sometimes, you know, the, the hard thing is, you know, realizing that there are steps to this process that I can't, you can't go from, you know, you know, from the beginning to the end overnight and that you have to kind of go through these steps and you got to lay the foundation uh, along the way. 
So when you build on top of it, you're continuing to build a strong, you know, organization. Um, and so I think, you know, for us, you know, we really took a step back this year to uh, hone in on in, in-house training, you know, laying some foundations, some principles that are company wide um, and, and really, you know, putting into place a more robust, you know, in-house training uh, platform uh, to do continuing education and keep our team, you know, our, in our culture, you know, strong and, and, and keep everyone on the same page and understanding, you know, what our mission and our vision and what we're trying to accomplish. So um, if anything, just, you know, taking a, a breather, taking a second to just slow down um, and, 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 and really focus on the foundation. To the CEO, <clears throat> founder, physician-led organization person listening right now, um, what would you tell them? Closing thoughts. Closing Good thoughts. <laughs> floor is yours. Um, what's that? Floor is yours, sir. Yeah, uh, you know, I, th- I think, you know, just from, uh, probably this is going to stem back from this passion, right? Like, I would just encourage anyone in this industry, um, whatever age, whatever role, um, that like we just like like I feel like healthcare needs, and specifically senior care too. Like I really feel like from a senior care perspective. You know, we need all the talent we can get. And, and, and a lot of that talent may not necessarily be all technology talent. Like we need talent and, 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 and um, excitement and inspiration and energy to be flowing into actual care provider options for people. You know, what, so we really need to like, you know, like kind of band together as a group and find ways to, you know, kind of inspire other people to get into this field to maybe even explore and pursue a passion or a, you know, a, um, an idea in the senior care space, you know, one that may be, may not necessarily be as much technology focused as it might be care model focused, mm-hmm. senior living, senior housing option focused, um, you know, and so in aspire, you know, inspiring more younger people, how, how can we do that? Um, you know, like every organization, what can we do to inspire younger people to get involved in senior care? Because when I go to these conferences and I see, you know, 40 year olds, 45 year olds, and that's all that are there. That's the 90% of the population there. Um, you know, what happens when they're all in our facilities and we're caring for them? Who's going to be running these organizations? Who's going to be making these executive decisions or coming up with these new ideas to meet these care needs of an ever growing, you know, a, 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 like population of people that are going to need this care, you know? Beautiful. Thank you for joining us on the Healthcare CEO Show. If you've enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe on your favorite podcast platform for more insights from the top. Until next time, lead boldly and care deeply. See you on the next episode.